When it comes to talking about mutations and mutagens and things that can cause mutations or changes in your DNA, there are two uh, big examples of where this could have been studied. So we had a nuclear power plant disaster in Chernobyl. We're going to talk about that. And then also the use of atomic bombs. So we're going to talk about the effects of that atomic bomb, what has been studied, and what the possible consequences of exposure to radiation and radioactive isotopes may have caused for human humans in the past. This is pretty sad stuff and so you really have to try to understand um, what's going on here. Understanding the environmental impacts of things that humans may have created to help us solve energy problems and also for unfortunately war and warfare as well too. So Chernobyl you probably heard about, Ukraine 1986, there was a fire in the nuclear reactor, a lot of radioactive materials ended up escaping six tons approximately as estimated immediately we can find already that if compared to other nuclear accidents that have happened in the past chernobyl relatively less immediate impact because of the location 28 workers died i mean those are still important lives within three months from acute exposure to the actual radiation as well too. Leukemia rates are thought to have gone up as well too. Radioactive iodine, which is one of the isotopes that's released when these radioactive isotopes go out, uh, rose in the drinking water. They had a study where they showed a bunch of cases of thyroid cancer were probably attributed to this. Uh, animals, horses, cattle died from damage to thyroid glands as well too. When the earthquake happened here in Japan in March of 2011, there were a lot of emails going around from the embassies, U.S. embassies, people talking about distribution of iodine tablets. Iodine is good for the thyroid to protect the thyroid gland. A lot of young parents uh, decided to try to get away from those particular areas as well too because little kids are more susceptible to some of those radioactive isotopes and elements that could cause damage they're still developing and so that's the idea behind that as well too um, this idea of bioaccumulation so when radiation shows up organisms get exposed they end up accumulating these radioactive isotopes in their body if something then goes and eats that thing then that thing now has the higher accumulation of those chemicals and if i eat that big fish that ate those 10 small fish that ate 50 even smaller fish then the relative concentration of these chemicals or radioactive isotopes is really built up so i'll feel the most of it when i eat this big giant tuna fish for example if this tuna has been eating other things and all of the things below have been exposed to these types of radioactive isotopes so that's the idea that's what bioaccumulation means accumulation of chemicals or substances um, in life food chains that's where the bio comes in also a little bit of physics connection here as well too is this idea of what a half-life is. You can look up half-life charts and diagrams, but the idea here is that radioactivity decays over time. And so theoretically, if you wait long enough, the amount of radioactivity will decrease significantly significantly and depending on the type of radioactive element or radioactive isotope you're talking about, this time is very different. So the carbon half-life is about 5,000 years it takes for half of the radioactivity to disappear. That's a long time. For some of these other things like cesium or for potassium, we're talking about possibly in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of years it takes for the radioactivity to decay to half. So you can imagine a lot of these different elements that have been present and decaying in Chernobyl, it's probably still not the best place to go and visit because a lot of that radioactivity even though it's 1986 more than 30 years ago uh, this is still something that affects people and so people are not going to visit chernobyl happily increased risk of cancer and genetic disease difficult to prove but it's likely it seems to match the theoretical science and there has been some data to support this but remember correlation doesn't exactly mean causation. You have to really show a causal link between two particular things. And then four kilometers, four square kilometers of forest basically changed color and died. How this applies to the syllabus is that they want you to know that this kind of stuff can happen as a result of bad planning in science. And we need to know what the possible effects are before we make these big decisions and to learn from mistakes, to help us to make changes to the science that we're actually using.